CataractCoach.com, learning vertical chop FACO. The chopper is placed in the central nucleus. Our guest surgeon, Dr. Ishan Agarwal from India. So here's the case. You can see doing the hydro dissection, a good amount of nuclear density there. Now, vertical chop is significantly easier if the patient has at least 3 plus nuclear sclerosis. If the lens is very soft, like 1 plus NS, sometimes it's actually difficult to accomplish that. So this is a decent amount of nuclear sclerosis. I like it. You can see hydro dissection is done. The golden ring of hydro delineation is present. And let's see, the nucleus definitely spins, so that looks great. Now, the key here is placement of the instruments. You need to have a high vacuum setting, 400 or more millimeters of mercury. Higher flow is what I prefer, though the flow is not as critical. And the key is to hold the nucleus with the phaco probe. And when you hear that peak of the vacuum, and that's the holding power, then you chop. Both the chopper and the probe are going to be placed within the confines of the rexus. So horizontal chop is where you pl place that chopper around the capsular, underneath the capsular rim, around the lens equator. But here you don't need to. You don't need to place the chopper out there. You can keep everything within the confines of that central 5 millimeter rexus. So getting up a little of that anterior cortex here with the phaco probe, let's see the technique. So getting nice and deep into the nucleus here, you need to get that tip occluded if it's a peristaltic pump, which most of these are. And now going in with the chopper, and again, you're gonna, it's relatively sharp compared to the other choppers. So you need to get that vertical chop done. So again, bearing that probe, holding the nucleus, and then, well, try again, get the bubbles out, okay. Bury the probe deep in the nucleus, and now the chopper can be pushed downward and you can separate the halves. A little problem there with some air bubbles, so let's try that again. Buzzing in here, and chopper can be placed now too, and then just going downward. So it's a vertical motion, hence vertical chop. And like that, the nucleus has been split into two halves. So nice job there. And again, it can be done again and a small piece broken off. And so this is the vertical chop technique. Now, Dr. Agawal here is doing a great job and has reported being uh, done, doing about 700 cases. So this is about 700 cases in and very good technique for that level of experience. So removing that first quadrant can give you a little bit more working room. And then now we can get the other pieces, again, sub-chopping them. So vertical chop is definitely a nice technique to learn. And again, remember the patients need to have at least some degree of nuclear density here. So now once this other piece is up, you don't have to vertical chop, but you can do any other kind of chop. Just split the pieces apart, claw them apart. And that you saw was just there, accomplished very well. So taking these last ones out, you can see in the capsular bag, there's still one hemi-nucleus remaining. These small fragments should come out pretty quickly and pretty easily. Now this looks like... Uh, Surgeon is sitting superiorly and doing a left eye. And draping's good, no lashes in the field, I like that. Good exposure, eyes staying in primary. So beautiful job here. All right, let's see. Now take that last piece out and let's see how we chop the remaining nuclear piece that the other hemi-nucleus that's down in the bag. And remember all these nuclei that are denser in the center, a little bit softer in the periphery. And that's why the, when you do this vertical chop, it's easier to do it in the center there. Now be careful with the choppers, it is relatively sharp. So now buzzing in here, and then again, there's the vertical chop. So you're essentially clawing the pieces apart. So holding it with the probe and then pushing straight down and you can break off that piece. And now you're left with just a few small pieces and those can be emulsified pretty easily. Now you can still use this chopper the rest of the case, just be careful that tip is pretty sharp and it can damage the posterior capsule. Now do you need any kind of special chopper to do it? Well no, you've seen me with my single chopper, I'll do any technique, horizontal, vertical, combo chop, whatever you want. So the instruments are good, but I assure you the hands are more important than the instruments. So last bits are coming up and We'll see, it looks like an epinuclear shell down there that can be emulsified as well. That should come up pretty easily. So the hydro delineation was nice because that brought that central dense endonucleus, made it a little bit more manageable in size. And then now the, the epinuclear shell can be aspirated out quite easily. So chopper coming out, what are we doing here? Oh, there we go. Okay, maybe it's a different instrument, less sharp tip, hopefully. 
or maybe not at all, just using vacuum, you want to get that whole epinuclear shell out. They'll take up, oh, there you go. That looks like a Sinsky hook or something similar. So not quite as sharp. And he's just going to help free that up. Yeah, I just use low vacuum here and then just try to tease the whole thing up, the whole epinuclear shell at once. And sometimes even using the probe to flip it. Like here's where the, the second instrument can be used to help flip that thing and get it out of the capsule bag. The key here is using only vacuum. Don't use phaco energy. That epinuclear shell is too soft. If you use phaco energy, you'll, you'll lose your grip. You'll go right through the piece. So again, a little bit of a struggle here, and this is very typical. At 700 cases, you're doing great. Remember, I, what I show you as my learning curve, I think you really need to do at least 1,000 or 2,000 cases to really get to a good part of that, uh, that mastery level. And then remember, things that happen rarely, you have to encounter them. So if things happen only one in 1,000 cases, and you've done 700 cases, you, chances are you probably haven't seen it yet. So there you go. Let's finish up the rest of the case real fast. It goes pretty routine. And he's going to put the lens in after he does his bimanual IA. That looks great. And it's a nice technique. So I want to see at the end here, I always like to see the lens going in the eye so I can help judge the Rexa size. That looks like a good single piece acrylic lens, probably Technus uh, ZC Boo. And that looks beautiful. Let's seal up the incisions, call it a day. So thank you, Dr. Algabar, for your vertical chop technique. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.